So, ladies and gentlemen, what I'd like to do is I'd like to go over kind of a quick little review, first of all, of what we've already talked about. And then what I'd like to do is just kind of go over some new information that we're going to discuss. So the first thing, for those especially if you were not here, is to kind of go back through what we spoke about last class period. So what we talked about last class period was quadratic functions. All right? And quadratic functions, if you remember, were functions that had variables raised to the second degree, right? And all the quadratic functions could be written in the form of f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That was what we called the quadratic function. And the main important thing about quadratic functions was that we had our exponent of 2. right? We've talked previously about linear functions. That could be like f of x equals x plus 1 or 3x minus 2. Those are linear, meaning your variable has, um, you have a variable with an exponent of 1. When we have a variable with an exponent of 2, we have a quadratic. Now, the important thing about a quadratic function is remember a, b, and c are real numbers, and a cannot equal 0. All right, Michaela? Yep. Good. So now, the next thing we want to do, Anna, is look at this. And so this is what we call the quadratic function. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about a quadratic equation. And a quadratic equation is very similar to a quadratic function. However, we're going to set a quadratic equation equal to a value. And the value that we're going to set it equal to is 0. All right, so this is just what we call a quadratic equation. And when we were talking about before, like those, uh, those forms of linear equations, this is what we call like our standard form of a quadratic equation. Now, there's something that happens. The reason why we like to differentiate between a function and an equation. If you guys remember, let's say I did a problem like this. 1 half x minus 4 equals 8, right? And what do we have to do? Just do this. What I'd say, I'd, I'd say solve, right? Thinking back like back in the day, I would say solve, and we would get a value for x. Now, the value for x would, give, would tell us would be our what? What would we call the value of x that made this true? We called it our what? Nobody remembers the value of x. Oh, OK, we need to back up. So remember, let's go back. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, to solve for x, we had a set of steps that we do, right? You'd add 4. Then you have 1 half x equals 12. Then you multiply by the reciprocal, right? So you'd say x equals 24. So 24 is a what to my equation? Maybe I'll put it that way. Solution. Very good, yes. So ladies and gentlemen, when we have a linear equation, all right, we found solutions. What we did is we found, because remember, remember it's a solution because if you take 24 and you plug it back into the equation, it makes the equation true, correct? So when we set a quadratic equation equal to 0, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to find solutions. All right? And solutions take on some different names. So the first one that we take on a solution is what we call the roots. So the roots of a quadratic equation are the solutions. Solution, solutions of our quadratic equation. OK? So what that means is it doesn't matter what a, b, and c are. a, b, and c are numbers, all right? Same thing, 4 and 1 half, 8, it doesn't matter. Those are numbers. But what when I say find me the roots, I want you to find the solutions. Find the values of x that are going to make this equation equal to 0. Okay, That's exactly what I'm saying. When I say find the roots, I want you to find the solutions. Find the values of x that make this 0. Same thing. When I say 1 half x minus 4 equals 8, find the value of x that when I plug x when I plug in, for, when I um, multiply by 1 half and subtract by 4, I'm going to get 8. All right? And to, so to do that, we had to follow steps for linear equations. Well, same thing, we're going to have to follow different steps for quadratics. The next one was our zeros. Okay? Now, zeros are actually really the same thing as kind of your roots. It just kind of depends on what we deal with. A lot of times, though, I'm not going to give you your function. So your zeros 
are just going to be the values of x that make your function equal to 0. Now, <clears throat> if you guys kind of read that slowly, what you'll understand is that's really saying the exact same thing. It's the values of my x that make f of x equal to 0. So the reason why I'm saying that, because a lot of times, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say, hey, find the, find the zeros of the function. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take your function, set it equal to 0, and then solve using our techniques we're going to talk about. So really, the, the roots and the zeros are really you're doing the same operation. However, when I find the roots, that means you're usually going to be starting with an equation. And when I say find the zeros, it just means you're going to start with a function, which you're now going to convert to an equation, and then you're going to solve. Kind of make a little sense? Kind of? Maybe? No? OK. All right, so let's go back and think about, <clears throat> um, let's go back and think about what we had, right? Let's, uh, if you guys remember, um, 3x minus 1 equals 11, right? Do you guys remember the steps for solving your linear equations? It's the reverse order of operations, right? There's a step-by-step -step process you guys had to follow, correct? So Zach, the first thing you did was you add a 1 to the first array, right? You always undo addition and subtraction first. Then you got 3x equals 12. Then you undid addition or multiplication and division. So you saw x equals 4. Right? Good. Hopefully some of you got that. All right. Then let's say, then what else we moved on to this year was uh, we moved on to absolute value, any absolute value equations, right? Do you guys remember doing these? And then remember these, these had two separate um, these had two separate cases, right? Remember I set, told you to separate these. I say x minus 2 equals 3, and x minus 2 equals negative 3. So in this problem, we actually have two solutions. We don't have actually one solution in this problem. We have a possibility of two solutions. Yeah, thank you. So in this problem, we actually have a possibility of two solutions. Is there, only, is there a way to have more than one answer in this problem right there? No, x equals 4, and that's it, right? 4 is the only possible number that you can plug in for x that's going to make this equation true, right? However, in this one, is it possible to have two different solutions? Yes, because let's check it out. When I add 2, I could say x equals 5. Or when I add 2 over here, I could say x equals negative 1. Because plug in 5 in for x, 5 minus 2 is 3. Absolute value of 3 is 3. Negative 1. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. Absolute value of negative 3 is equal to negative 3. So do you guys see how there are two, there are two different, there's possibility to have two solutions for an equation, right? Um, <clears throat> now let's look at one example where it might be possible to have no solutions. Okay? So let's say, ladies and gentlemen, I have x squared plus 1 equals 0. So what, does anybody know what the first thing you do on a problem like this, on a quadratic? Follow the reverse order of operations. So the first thing you want to undo would be what? Okay, on the order of operations, the first thing you do is parentheses and then exponents, right? And then you do parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, adding and subtracting. Now we're doing the opposite of that. So the first thing I'm going to want to undo is going to be what? Addition and subtraction. So you look at this. Is there any adding or subtracting going on? Yeah, so I'm going to subtract the 1 first. So therefore, I have x squared equals negative 1. Now, how do I undo x squared? I'm going to have to do what? Take the square root on both sides. So I have x equals the square root of negative 1. Is there any number that's exactly the same that multiplies to give you negative 1? No, so there's no answer there, is there? There's no answer. So ladies and gentlemen, what I've just created is when we're going to be talking about quadratic functions, 
there's going to be three top there's going to be three types of solutions that we're going to have. There's going to be a time where we're going to only have one one answer. There's going to be a time when we're going to have two answers and there's going to be an opportunity, I'm sorry, solutions. One solution, two solutions, oh, and there's going to also going to be an opportunity where we're going to have no solutions. So, let's go ahead and take a look at some examples of those three. So you guys are definitely going to want to write these down because now we have three opportunities. So we're talking about equations, right? So that means 0 equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We're not going to talk about linear or absolute value. I was just showing you that to show you, um, to show you a resemblance of other functions compared to or other equations relating to our quadratic equation. So let's take a look at what, what does a graph look like when we have one solution? of a parabola. What does our graph look like when we have two solutions? And what does our graph look like when we have no solutions? All right. So first of all, solutions. Do you guys remember what our solutions, what we represent our solutions with, right? I'll say it again. Solutions are our roots. Our roots are our solutions. Remember what solutions and roots mean. They mean the values of x that make this statement, this equation, true. So first of all, let's look at this. Remember, if we're, this, comes, this is derived from our function. So therefore, this is our output. So if we have a function, we have here's my f of x axis, here's my x axis. We want to find when f of x is equal to 0. So f of x is equal to 0 at the x-axis, right? My f of x axis, or my y-axis, is equal to 0 at the x-axis. Kind of? Follow me? So let, let me just go ahead and draw a picture here for you guys, and you can see what here. So one solution, ladies and gentlemen, is when I only have one value for x that makes that at when or f of x is equal to 0. That means I only have one answer. That means x equals one number makes it 0. So it could look like this. So remember, we're graphing parabolas, right? So that means it only touches it once. So if I have one solution, it only touches it once. And I'll give you guys an example here. Let's, let's, let me pretend my function looks like this. f of x equals x minus 3 squared. And we'll, I'll show you guys the work here in a second. Um, two solutions. Two solutions is when it crosses the graph twice. That means there's going to be two separate numbers that are going to make, two separate numbers are going to make f of x equals 0 are going to make it true. OK, Amber? So let's say here's an example of a function I can show you algebraically. Um, so that means the graph is going to look something like this. So if the graph kind of touches it at one point, that means we have one solution. If it kind of crosses it, it has two solutions, which I'll say is f of x, x squared minus 4. And then there's what if it has no solution? That means there's not a value on my graph that crosses when f of x equals 0. All right? So let's go through this in an example. Um, let's see here. I'll do f of x equals x minus 2 squared plus 5. All right, so we'll do something like that. <sighs> OK, so ladies and gentlemen, here's what I'm going to be asking you to do. All right, so you guys want to make sure you have this written down. So here you guys have your three examples. You only have three options. So I'm going to ask you, what are the solutions of a quadratic? You're only going to have to know one, two, or three solutions. Or I'm sorry, one, two, or no solutions. 
and you need to know what it looks like. Now, how are we going to determine when do, how do we know if it has one, two, or three? Well, again, if I give you a function, that means we, we need to convert it to an equation to find the values that make it true. So we're going to find the zeros if it's a function, convert it to an equation. So what we do is we set f of x equal to 0, because we want to know when does the graph cross this x-axis. What are the x values that make my, or what are the x values at where my graph crosses the x-axis? Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's where students get confused, because they forget how to solve. Remember when you guys solved in Algebra 1? It was a basic process, right? It was reverse order of operations. First thing you do is always undo addition and subtraction. Then you undo multiplication and division. You guys did that over and over and over. It was a process, Wendy, that you guys needed to um, master. So now, let's look at it. First thing I need to undo here. Does anybody know what's the first thing I need to do to solve for this? If I said solve for x, how would you solve for x right here? Yeah, you got to get rid of the square root, right? You can't do anything inside that parenthesis until you undo the square root. So I square root both sides. What's the square root of 0? Zero? 0, right? Equals x minus 3. Now can you guys solve for x? Can you find the value of x that makes this equation true? Yeah. You add 3 to the other side. So x equals 3. That means when you put 3 in for x, you're going to get 0. It's going to make that true. OK? Um, so here's the next one. So you guys have 0 equals x squared minus 4. Is there a, um, what do you guys want to do for here? What's the first step you're going to do here? You can't square root it first. We have to do something first. You have to undo that, right? You have to add the 4 to the other side. You have to undo addition and subtraction. So we have 4 equals x squared. Now you take the square root. So therefore, x equals what? 2. And what else? What two numbers multiply that are exactly the same multiply to give you 4? 2, you're right, and negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, and 2 times 2 is 4. So here we could say plus or minus 2. Because remember, when you introduce the square root, you're introducing the positive and the negative. 0 is not positive or negative. 0 is 0. There is no positive or negative value for 0. So therefore, that's why square root of 0 is 0. However, the square root of 4 says what two numbers that are exactly the same multiply to give you 4. There's two answers to that. It's 2 and 2, and negative 2 and negative 2. So your answer is x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. Bless you. Does that make sense? Huh? Yeah. 2 is a real number, and negative 2 is a real number. You're just taking the square root of them. Now, for here, the same thing. Before you can do any squaring, I have this, I have this subtraction I can take rid of. So I subtract the 5. So I get negative 5 equals x minus 2 squared. And then I need to take the square root of it, right? Ladies and gentlemen, can you take the square root of a negative number? No. no. So guess what? This one's going to be no real roots. OK? No real roots. So do you guys kind of see right now? I just, did, I just made up kind of three different problems right now. Um, but what you guys are going to do, if you guys can see that, there's going to be opportunities when you only have one solution, meaning your function or your equation or your, fun, your graph is only going to cross it once. So there's a visual representation. And then I show you algebraically why that works. Here, it's when it crosses it twice, you have two different answers that make your equation true for x. And here, there's not a number in the real number system that's going to make that true. All right? Any questions on this? All right, that's my big, nice, long log log. Oops. Um, oh.